It was last May that we started work on my new studio. As you can see, it started as an old stable block filled with junk. So we took a long time to clear everything out and start from scratch again. There's a lot of digging in the ground for drainage. Uh, we had to chop down a tree and use a chainsaw to take out the roots. We then put in ground screws, built a frame and put the frame up. And it was then that we started to make the openings for the windows and doors and um, start to protect the new roof and the extension from the elements. Then we added insulation. That was my husband's visualization. We got the roof done. And then we were drenched in rain for months. In October, we started putting the cladding up and I was still working in my tiny studio in the house. And things were starting to come together quite well. And at this point you kind of think, oh yeah, things are going well. It won't be too long until we move in. But no, <laughs> a Christmas move in was not gonna happen. So we put the windows in, we were still waiting on the door, we put the plasterboard up on the inside, uh, we had some problems with the roof as well. I think at this point it was starting to leak, the tiler was already due to come and we, the door then arrived, which was so lovely. It came primed, it was made by our friend as were all the windows in the, in the building. So then we had to paint all those and get them ready for the next stage of the build. So we had to put a special tile back and board down before we could get the tiles down. We have some underfloor heating. It's not proper underfloor heating. It's more like a ambient kind of heat. We were able to choose um, these terrazzo tiles. They're just porcelain tiles um, as they were quite thin and they would work with the underfloor heating. And yeah, things are starting to look quite good at this point, but you can see there the leak has started to really show itself. We also had a flood, kind of as well. And we had to dig a land drain outside the studio to prevent that from happening again. It was actually where Timmy's standing there, um, inside the, my now storeroom. There was a little flood came in through the, the hole one night, so that's not great. But as soon as we made the land drain, which is like a trench, filled with like gravel and stuff. There you can see the little flood. That stopped that straight away. The water just wasn't getting away properly. So we continued to do little cleanups here and there, but really there was no point. We still had a lot of dirty work to do. The roofers came back five or six times and it was frosty as well. Happy New Year. Welcome back to my channel in 2024. <laughs> I'm down at the studio taking a little break from packing. I have been packing all your orders for the last couple of days, so thank you so much. So so we now have a door which needs another coat of paint, so that's a job to do very soon. And we're doing a kind of underfloor heating situation, so that's what all these coils are. And the tiler has said that it would have been best if we could put this layer down before actually tiling, in case he nicks the, the underfloor heating. So I can obviously walk on it, but this is what we're looking at at the moment. This is inside my office, what it looks like. you'll be able to see pretty well in this window how it looks. There we go. Yeah. And uh, this appears to have happened. <laughs> yeah. 
just in case you hadn't realised, everything for this build, from the wood to the tiles to the grout, the cement to the compost to absolutely everything had to be brought in by wheelbarrow. So that is no mean feat. I would say about half of the work in this build was bringing everything, carrying it by hand or by wheelbarrow down to the garden. So that's no mean feat. The tiles are down now. This was a dry day in January when I actually managed to put a second coat on the door. Um, I went for a colour by Crown. Um, it was a RAL colour. And yeah, there was a, at this point there was a huge mess outside to clear up and it was, I was bringing muck inside every time I went from the outside to the inside. So this continued to be a problem until pretty recently. We're in May now. No, sorry, we're in April. <laughs> and there was so much soil to move as well down there it's just grass this is a situation that needs sorted out and then over here we have some crazy paving which i don't love but don't hate it's fine this was crazy paving but i don't exactly want to relay crazy paving and i can imagine in this area that there would be lots of like woodlandy plants same as over here um, might plant another tree here where the chestnuts fall. Although we did plant a few trees, but I don't know if any of them are the right tree. So yeah, um, hear that bird. The garden really needs looked at as well. So I might do a little video with my spring planting plan for twenty twenty four or something like that. I really need to do that anyway myself. <laughs> So yeah, better go in and do a bit more work here or else I'm not going to get all your orders out. <laughs> another day in the middle at the start of January sometime and my units have just arrived for my dye studio which I'm really excited about. Um, these ones are a little bit shorter than I expected but they were designed to our specification obviously so um, and obviously I am short so that's why they're short because whenever you're lifting up yarn to dye you don't want to be lifting it like above your head and at the moment I am and it's quite difficult <laughs> excuse me so we got these designs so that I would have to do that and yeah they're really dinky and I have my sinks here let's look at them closer um so I have these wee shelves below and I'm planning on you know storing my yarn in here like my prep yarn so it's not all like sitting out on the floor um so hopefully that works probably store my yarn in here before i dye it and then in here i'll probably just store all my all my pots which i have quite a lot of i have this bench down here i think this will be primarily used for you know if i'm drying out like i'm just gonna flip you around here if I'm drying out dye stuff from the garden, I can have like a little metal grill thing here and then, you know, I can have it sitting out here to dry. I can also have piles of yarn here, which I'm so excited about, like to have space and room. I can't believe I'm going to be actually working in here. It's actually crazy. And then I'll just have down here for storage. I don't know what I'm going to store in here. Like, I can be super or
What do you think of my song? half past three. I've been pretty much sewing all day. I sewed or I cut all the the wood for the third roof light. I cut all the lengths for the raised beds which we're going to make tomorrow and I am cutting for my office ceiling and when that's done I'm going to screw in the bottom run of... I'll show you. So I need to put in the bottom run of screws here. Well, this still has to be done, but I'm not going to get that done today. Here's all my little piles of wood for the next one. The situation with the studio at the moment is we're plumbed in. The sinks are plumbed in. The electricians come in. I think he's hoping to come start on Tuesday. I don't know if he'll be back next week at all or it'll be the week after when he comes. But pretty much after the electrician's been, I can move in. However, we have had a leak for the last few months since basically since the roof got done. Um, and there's been a lot of like chat about it. So the roofers have been back a few times to have a look at it. The last time they replaced part of the gutter and now we actually need to insulate on the underside of the gutter because the roof is actually insulated on the outside. Um, so we're going to insulate on the inside and then we have to put the beam back up that holds the gutter up from the inside. And after the leak is fixed, then we can put the ceiling in my office up and that basically, after that, we're basically on the home straight. So for now, it still looks like a workshop like a like a wood workshop and it smells like a sauna which is great so yeah so i'm hoping in about a month's time i can start i can do like a deep clean in here and hopefully i can start moving all my stuff down then i'm gonna do a huge spring clean in the house which i'm really looking forward to because it really needs it um the house has kind of got neglected because every spare minute we have, we're working here, or I'm working on Woolly Mammoth. Uh, right now the garden looks like this. So as I said before, tomorrow we're making the raised beds. Then I've got all my dye plant seeds to propagate. I've cut the grass for the first time, just kept the more on a really high level, but it tidied it up a bit. And then I have um, bark coming on Friday. Wait. Tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow. The park is coming tomorrow. And we're going to lay it all around the raised beds. I'm not sure whether to put cardboard and then bark to try and keep the weeds light down. But I don't think I have enough cardboard to do that. So I'm not sure what we'll do. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where we're at at the moment. Um, For my ornamental bed, which will be here uh, to about halfway down the garden. Um, I'm going to do prairie style-ish, so that means I need to have a layer of gravel down here, so we need to order some gravel, a layer of leaf mulch, which I can get from my friend, he said he has some, and then a layer of council compost, which is really cheap, 
you just I think you can just fill bags or fill trailers or whatever so someday we'll do that then this soil after we take this bit of grass up grass off um, then it can be kind of flattened out somehow so there's actually a lot still to do and for a while there I was thinking oh we're nearly finished like once the electrician's been I can move in here but now I'm suddenly already thinking about the garden and I need to get on with that if I want to have any dye plants this year so yeah from one project into the next um but I am going to have a bit of an open and shindig so that I can just celebrate moving in otherwise if you don't stop to celebrate you just you just don't you just don't do it and it should be a nice wee party for some of my friends and family and that type of thing so yeah it's going okay be nice to see the electricity down here and i have a little bit of painting to do i need to go and buy a few tiles for around the sink and then it's up to the joiner to put in my office really Yep, so I'm going to keep cutting wood here before I run out of time. I've got about an hour and a half before I have to go and pick up my little girl. So, yep. It's the 1st of March and today I've been making raised beds but I didn't get, I was wanting to get them all done today. There's eight to do but I didn't get them all done because my helpers went and left me. <laughs> so uh, you need someone to help you hold up the middle piece of the raised bed. Let's see if I can show you. So I've screwed in all these ends, but I can't screw on the long bit of the raised bed unless someone's holding that. These are the two that I've done so far. I'll just take you down and show them to you. 
here's the two I've done so far. So in the bottom I'm going to put cardboard and then I think I'll put some wood chips and then I think I'll put some uh, compost from the council. Hopefully it's not too windy in this. But just very basic, two boards high. Um, I ordered this wood chip today but I did not order enough. So I'm going to have to probably order a lot more. <laughs> But it was such a lot of work to bring it down from the road so it's probably good just doing it in, in bits so yeah i don't think i'm gonna get this finished today now but that's all right oh here's my helpers coming well how are you yeah well i finished my job so i thought i would record a bit so you back to help me again? No. Where did Maggie go? He's in the house. Classic. He's there. I need to relax. We just came down here last night to clear the studio for the electrician who is coming today. Um, the roofers have been back to fix the leak, but we don't know whether or not it's been fixed yet because it hasn't rained. Like a big downpour. But they seem to have done a good job, so hopefully, hopefully it's not there anymore but the studio looks really big once it's all been still have to do around the inside of this one maybe tonight um so yeah it looks really big and i can't believe i'm gonna work here i'm saving all my cardboard for the raised beds and i still have a bit of i have to make the threshold for the door and then all these bits here that have been filled they need to be sanded and painted. So we need to do that pretty soon, I would say. And then the walls need touched up a wee bit too. See, there must be a wee bit of water getting in there. And also here, but I think that's because the trim on the back has not been put on yet. It's just open to the elements. Um, we screwed down this little windowsill last night. We had two of these tiny screws left. So I think that looks well. And yeah, the next thing we need to do is pack out. Pack out from the wall here. And frame this with a piece of wood to finish that off and that'll be that totally finished and then that means we can push this bench into place uh, we also need to um, get a piece of oak or something hard wearing on this bottom bit because it'll be walked over a lot so that's quite important that could be done anytime and then we'll just continue it up here cross and down so it frames the office space so yeah that is what it's looking like at the moment i'll zoom out here there we go so i'll have my spin dryer here in this corner will be like from here to here will be like drying racks and obviously all my pots along here all my spare pots in below and we have all of this protective film to take off. But apart from that, we're close to being done. Well, inside, haven't even got started on the outside yet.
it's sometime around the end of March. Um, I'm off dying this week, which means I'm trying to get the studio ready to move into. And today I have been doing a little bit of painting on the woodwork. I have been putting a trim up around a window with the help of Timmy, of course. And I have been sanding uh, a, a piece of wood that's going to become a shelf. And I have um, cut and sanded it, um, a little piece of wood that I had lying around the house for ages that I'm going to make into like a coat hook and for putting my keys and apron and stuff on. So, so far in here, the point that we've got to now is the power is in. You can see the sockets behind me, but the electrics won't actually be finished for another, I think, four weeks and um, because the electrician's just coming one day a week, which is fine. The power's in. Technically, I could move in here, but he's putting the broadband in this week, which means I can move my computer and stuff down, which means I can do orders from here. Um, I can set up a temporary desk in my office. The leak is fixed. I have, we've had a leak here in the roof for like months and it's finally been fixed. So hooray for that. Um, apparently they went up there, the roofers, and they found a bubble of, like a bubble in the rubber stuff. And um, when they burst it, all this water came out. So I'm guessing that's what the problem was. Um, so now I am almost ready to move the last bench into place. And once the trims are on, these other two roof lights here, that one's on, this one is not on, this one is not on. Then I think I can move all the saws and the ladder out because they take up a lot of space. You see I've moved some of my boxes in, which is nice. Um, I need to put the closure on this window and I need to finish painting these two windows down here. They need another coat. Then I'm going to do the deep clean. Oh, the threshold needs to put on the door. That's a little cement, co concrete cement job. And we're just doing that type of threshold because it's the type of door it is that works. So yeah, it's coming on well. Technically, I could be in here next week. I'd like to be in here next week because I would like to start dyeing the Galway yarn which went super well last month. So I'd like to have more in the shop this month, but I need to set up here properly and get a good system going and iron out if there's any problems. In the garden then, um, oh, I got this little bit tiled too. You were sitting on it, so maybe you didn't see, got this little bit tiled. And my office still looks like this. So pretty much we can't put the ceiling up, which is what all of this is until the electrician's done in here, which could be like three weeks. Um, but yeah, once I set up this temporary desk, I'm just going to be setting up here and I'll just stack my um, boxes of dye yarn here. But yeah, there's a lot of tidying and cleaning to be done. Um, this is the little coat reel thing I was. I just had to give it a wipe there because it was quite dusty. It's been sitting in the house for maybe six years. But it's a nice piece of wood. I'm not sure if it's mahogany or walnut, but we were we used it for some skirting boards in our house a long time ago. So I've ordered, actually, I thought I was going to buy a piece of oak and then we find this. So I've actually, the pegs I've ordered for it, um, our oak so it might look a bit random but my architect husband says it'll work nicely the contrast need to finish taking off this and then what I'm going to do is clean this all down bring out my induction plates and the pots and um I'll try and get them all cleaned 
in below because there's some fluff in below in the fan so I like to clean that out and I like to clean the pots. We actually still have to get the extraction system in here. It's been going on, it's going to go along here and out there. Um, that'll take all the steam and stuff out. Any particulates, I suppose. And yeah, the fixture needs, closure needs put on this. I'll show you the garden now. So yesterday, Timmy and our friend Dave filled up all the raised beds. We got compost from the council. We might add in a bit of topsoil, but this is very rich looking stuff. Although I do know it heats up very hot and kills a lot of the microbial activity in the compost. But all my seeds are... There's a good view there. All my seeds are in the greenhouse and they are coming on well. Not all of the dye plants have germinated. I'll just show you around before this wind picks up too much. So this is going to be a mix of for dye plants and also for like veg, I suppose. Then over here is going to be an ornamental bed. So this will be another day. It took them a whole day to get, get the compost on the trailer. We'll borrow it down here and put it on. I had to strip all the tape off the cardboard boxes and for to put in below this so the weeds don't come through. We did it two or three thick. This is the ornamental bed which needs cardboard on it. This is a one big bit I saved for this. We need to get gravel in here over the land drain and then we need to cover this in compost and then we're good to start planting basically. This here is actually the path. So we're going to get another load of bark because this is, it needs to be six inches thick. And to be fair, like this has trampled way down in the course of like a fortnight. So yeah, that is how it is looking. In the greenhouse now, I'll show you what's, what's happening in here. Got some tubs for my potatoes. I got 10. I think that'll be enough. They're quite big pots, so I think it'll be fine. Um, I didn't want to put them in the ground because I had an experience with putting them in a raised bed where I couldn't get rid of them because they just kept coming, even though I thought I took them all out years later. <laughs> so they're going in tubs and then I can tip them into a wheelbarrow and get them out that way or keep them in the tub, move them into the greenhouse, store them over the winter. I think you can do that. Maybe they shouldn't be in the light, I'm not sure, but maybe if they're in compost, it's fine. I'll flip the camera here. This is the woad. It's just germinated. And the dyer's coreopsis, it has germinated. Nothing from the black-eyed Susan yet. This is, what is this? Oh, this is my tomatoes. Mm, don't think to see anything there yet. And this is a gustache. Uh, then these are all my spring bulbs that I never I never planted. Sad, sad but true. My potatoes are chitting. I've got this is indigo, I think. Yep, nothing from that yet. Foxglove, nothing. Uh, perennial coreopsis, that will come because it started to germinate elsewhere. Or not perennial coreopsis. Um, matter, nothing. Matter, nothing. <laughs> Dyer's coreopsis is coming on well. And my sweet pea in the pots. I have hyacinth and turquoise lagoon and the turquoise lagoon doesn't seem to be really common for some reason. Um, 
this is the high scent it's a white one and the turquoise lagoon is kind of turquoise and pink it's my cause moss apricot um not so many of these have germinated as i would have expected and i would ideally like another about three trays of these so as soon as they're big enough to transplant i'm going to transplant them and sow more um my friend gave me some onions so those will be going in and i got a few more seed trays these are just from b and q um because i some of the dye plants they need to be s sown in the next year like the year after they're harvested so i had to get a few more i didn't want to like waste them i got where my seeds go oh yeah sweet pea i got a different sweet pea blue so that should um smell quite nice So I'm going to sew those tomorrow and I'm going to pot up these dahlias that I got. Now I actually got, one of you suggested that I get some dahlias for the dye garden. That primarily wasn't my reason for getting them. Um, I was influenced by my friend who ha who has an, an amazing dahlia or like cut flower area and I thought oh I'm going to try this. So I actually ordered some from Farmer Gracie who does deliver to Northern Ireland. And then when I went to B&Q, I seen some more things that I liked. I thought I could add to my Delia area. So my idea is just to get one of each and then propagate from that one because I think they're easy to take cuttings off. Um, and then I got, I have one of these actually this type from the garden center several years ago and i just wanted more of them so this is a cheap way to do it i guess so i'm going to pot these up and hopefully i don't know if i'll be able to plant them out this year or not uh it doesn't say but anyway yeah so i have more dahlias coming from farmer gracie but as you can tell, I was obviously over ambitious in the spring. For some reason, I never, or last autumn, it was last autumn, I should have had those bulbs planted and I never did it. So I'm making a big effort to do it. <laughs> I bought a really good book um, by Hugh Richards. He has a really good YouTube channel be called um, Hugh's Garden. It's spelled H-U-W, the Welsh way. And um, he's given me a lot of ideas for next year for things that I'd want to do. So, um, yeah, I'll maybe show it to you another time because <laughs> I have no idea if this is a renovation vlog, garden vlog or something else. <laughs> so anyway, it, I think it's around the 27th of March, something like that. And that's where we're at with the studio. So maybe this will wrap up this renovation-ish slash garden vlog. And next time you see me, it might be the reveal. I don't know. There's so much work to do still. I'm trying to focus on just do the next couple of things and then pick in another couple and do those. So I hope you enjoyed that little show and tell of the new studio.